Hey guys, it's Kaylee and welcome back to Hippie in a Suit where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where we stop backsliding on rights that were once enshrined and protected. I recently received a comment requesting that I cover the new United Nations Population Fund's report on the world population reaching 8 billion people. When I looked into the report, I was struck by the complexity and nuance of this issue, and I really thought it was worth exploring. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview on how our population has grown, a short history of alarmism around population growth, and an outline of the challenges we face when it comes to population dynamics today. As always, you'll find a link to my blog post in the description box below that includes links to all the research used in this video, resources where you can learn more about the population, and a few organizations who work on this topic that you may choose to follow or support. In addition, I'd like to give a big shout out to my friend Nicole, who's an expert on reproductive rights and health, and she looked over my research and gave me some really helpful feedback and additional resources to help with this script. Okay, without further ado, let's dive in. November 15th, 2022 was a monumental day for the human race. On that day, we passed the 8 billion person milestone. It took just 12 years for us to go from 7 billion to 8 billion people, a growth rate that has been stabilizing now after nearly a century of very rapid growth. World population didn't reach 1 billion until 1804, and then it took 123 years to reach 2 billion in 1927. It then took 33 years to reach 3 billion in 1960, 14 years to reach 4 billion in 1974, 13 years to reach 5 billion in 1987, and 11 years to reach 6 billion in 1998. Every time we hit one of these population milestones, a heated debate breaks out around what it's going to mean for the population moving forward. Famines, social unrest, and environmental collapse are all stated as potential consequences of our rapid growth. And it may shock you to learn that this kind of population panic can be traced all the way back to 1798, when Thomas Malthus published an essay on principle of population, which claimed that if populations grew exponentially while food production grew linearly, the result would be famine, conflict, and death. This kind of rhetoric continued throughout history and peaked in the 60s. One example of this peak was the release of a book called The Population Bomb by Paul Ehrlich, who was a professor at Stanford University at the time. In this book, he claimed that death rates were going to skyrocket and we would face mass starvation and a dying planet. And while some may look around at our current challenges around hunger and environmental degradation and say that Ehrlich was in fact correct, the truth is his claims were extreme. He predicted a complete breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity within 15 years, which of course did not come to fruition. But what is most important is that this population alarmism rhetoric comes with some very serious consequences, and it helped to fuel a range of abusive population control programs. For example, people being forcibly sterilized, women being forced to use officially mandated contraception or to have forced abortions that may not have been the right choice for their health and autonomy, and families being told how many children they can have. And now here we are today with 8 billion people reached and predictions that we're going to hit 10 billion by the end of the century. Yet the discourse is different this time. Yes, those same alarm bells rang out about our newest population milestone, but at the same time, other high profile figures like Elon Musk were warning about the possibility of population collapse. Musk went so far as to say that population collapse due to low birth rates is a much bigger risk to civilization than global warming. So what's the truth? Are we too few or are we too many? The new UNFPA report tackles this topic head on and shows that the answer is not a simple binary, but rather a complex discussion about centering the rights of women and improving a wide range of systems to support our changing global population dynamics. The UNFPA's report is titled 8 Billion Strong, and it argues that we must move past simplistic narratives of too many or too few to better understand and cope with population dynamics. To break down the too many argument, the UNFPA explains that the narrative that we are overpopulated usually points the finger at poor and marginalized communities who have long been portrayed as reproducing recklessly despite actually having the smallest contributions to issues such as environmental destruction. Put quite simply, 
Consumption is the problem here, and more consumption is driven by high-income individuals and nations. In fact, half of all emissions come from the richest 10% of the world's population. The UNFPA also notes that the too-many narrative paints human survival as a problem rather than an achievement. Global life expectancy reached 72.8 years in 2019, which was an increase of nine years since 1990, thanks to advances in medicine, better hygiene and living conditions, and improved food, nutrition, and lifestyle. I think we can all agree that is something to celebrate. Ultimately, and to wrap up the too many argument, the UNFPA warned against any approaches that forcibly try to reduce population or birth rates and argues we must focus on investments in education, healthcare, clean and affordable energy, and gender equality to give people more autonomy and choice when it comes to their family decisions. Now, on the argument of too few, the UNFPA notes that while our global fertility rate remains above the replacement level of 2.1 births per woman, an estimated two-thirds of the world population is now living in a country or an area with a sub-replacement fertility, so lower than 2.1 births. Worldwide, fertility has fallen from an average of five births per woman in 1950 to 2.3 births per woman in 2021, and it's expected to fall to 2.1 births per woman by 2050. The UNFPA argues that these statistics are not a cause for alarm bells, that the population is going to collapse. In fact, only one region in the world, Europe, is expected to see an overall population decrease in the short term. Other regions such as Central, South, and Southeast Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, and North America are projected to continue growing, but to reach their peak sizes before 2100. It's important to remember that birth rate is not the only means of population growth in a region. Migration is expected to be the sole driver of population growth in high-income countries, and this demonstrates the importance of having sound migration policies, as I covered in my SDG 10 video. The UNFPA sees falling fertility as a positive indication that individuals, and particularly women, are able to exercise more control over their reproductive lives. So ultimately, the UNFPA report's largest conclusion is not that we are way overpopulated and that certain groups of people need to stop having children, nor is it that we are on the brink of population collapse. It points to broader global shifts we as society need to make in order to adapt to changing population dynamics. These include protecting the rights of women and reproductive choices, supporting aging populations, creating opportunities for young people, ensuring safe and fair integration of migrants into local populations, reducing the environmental burden of the rich, and holding governments and corporations accountable for environmental degradation while supporting new models of sustainable development. And that's it. That's all I have for you. If you've learned something in this video, give it a like. And as always, don't forget to check out the blog post if you want more information or to continue learning about this topic. See you in the next one. And until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye.